let's go to the third step by now you would have already removed the Windows security and you would have set mutual account recognition on all the PCs that are using OPC uh, applications. In this step, we're going to configure the system-wide DCOM settings. In other words, these are going to be the DCOM settings that affect all DCOM applications, which of course include OPC clients and servers. In order to get there, what you need to do is to click on the Windows Start button and very specifically select the Run Menu option. Uh, from there, type DCOM CNFG or DCOM Config uh, in the Run dialog box. And once you've done that, click on the OK button. From here, what you will notice is that the Component Services window pops up. So this isn't DCOM config. I mean it is DCOM config but it doesn't say DCOM config. It says component services. Here what you'll see is the um, uh, is a tree control that starts out with console root. So navigate down to component services from there go to computers and from computers right click on the my computer icon and uh, select properties very specifically. Once you hit the properties, you'll see the My Computer Properties dialog box with quite a few tabs in there. The first one we'll take a look at is the Default Properties tab. Here you'll notice the Enable Distributed Com on this computer. What that means is that every application, if you want the PC to use, uh, to be able to use DCOM, you have to have that checked. Uh, now, if that was not checked before, then you just have to make sure you check it but remember you'll have to reboot your computer it's not enough to log out it's not enough to restart you actually have to reboot your computer entirely in the default authentication level uh, choose connect that's the second option that you have in there uh, and specifically choose connect you can use a, a, an option that's a little bit lower on the list to get even more security but as far as OPC is concerned you really only need connect now the default of, uh, impersonation level set that to identify that provides you with the maximum security and the least amount of headache uh, when it comes to objects taking on specific um, uh, impersonations so choose identify Next, we go to the Default Protocols tab. In the Default Protocols tab, uh, you'll very often see uh, quite a few, or you might see uh, several protocols in there. Another popular one that, uh, of course, you see TCP IP, but you'll also see IPX, SPX. Uh, as far as OPC is concerned, you really only need to use TCP IP. So you can actually uh, get rid of everything else if other protocols are important for you feel free to leave them on the only consequence is that timeouts may take a little bit longer uh, but otherwise don't worry about it for TCP pardon me for OPC communication you really just need TCP IP next we go to the com security tab here you'll see a couple of groups one is access permissions which talks about which users are actually allowed to get data from the OPC server the second group is the launch and activation permissions and that talks about who is actually allowed to start an OPC server to begin with so it could very well be that somebody is allowed to start an OPC server but is not allowed to access any of the data in there what we'll do first is we'll have you hit the edit default button in the access permissions group so click on the edit default button once you hit the edit default button you'll see the default security tab uh, in account permissions and very specifically what we'll need to do is add everyone now remember this is very very important actually everyone includes all authenticated users and also guests but in Windows XP everyone no longer includes anonymous logon uh, so that affects Windows XP 2003 and, 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 and later but um, in Windows 2000 and 2000 server uh, everyone did include anonymous but no longer so everyone does not include anonymous second 
everyone actually includes all authenticated users which means that for example if I try to connect to a server on your computer so I am Randy Condor and I'm trying to connect to a server on your computer even though you allow access to everyone I am not actually included in there and the reason is I haven't been authenticated I, I do not have an account on your PC so uh, I'm not actually part of everyone so everyone actually includes all authenticated users it is not anyone so add everyone and of course um, while we're starting here give uh, permissions to everybody give them local access and also give them remote access and you'll see this later on in this particular step in step number three that we actually give everybody access every single time and of course we might choose to remove that later on in the fifth step when we put the security right back in but here what we're trying to do is just to get the communication working so if you click on OK uh, you go back to the dialog box as we saw before and this time click on the edit limits button and what you get again is access permission the access permission dialog box and you'll see the security limits tab in here you will need to add the anonymous logon and everyone uh, we already talked about everyone but the anonymous logon is actually used by OPC enum so that gives permissions for OPC enum to start uh, to, to accept connections make sure you have that set up if you don't have it set up it's very possible that uh, OPC enum uh, you will not get a connection to it and as a result you will not be able to browse for uh, OPC servers that are on the PC you're actually trying to browse if that's the case go back here uh, to this particular dialog box and add anonymous logon again uh, allow everyone access uh, local access and remote access give that to uh, both anonymous logon and to everyone click on the OK button and we'll go to launch and access permissions and pardon me launch and uh, activation permissions and in the uh, launch permissions dialog box of course we see the default security tab and this time once again you need to add everyone just like we did before and give the permissions so allow the permissions for everything there click on the OK button and go to edit limits here again in the launch permissions dialog box you'll see security limits where as before we add everyone and uh, of course allow the access for everything you see in the list and now once you've done all this DCOM should be properly configured system wide our next step is to actually configure DCOM for, for specific servers